Hi, my name is Casey Norman. I'm the Assistant Curator of Education for Youth and Family Programs here at the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts. And we are here in the museum, and I'm about to take you into the galleries and give you an idea of what our Becoming Alabama tour is. And we offer that for all of our fifth graders in Montgomery Public Schools. So we're gonna start in the gallery, and we're gonna see a few pieces, and we're gonna talk about them as artworks, but we're also gonna talk about how they relate to our state's history. And then we're gonna go into the studio, and we're gonna do an activity that's inspired by one of the pieces you're gonna see. And the really exciting thing is, is if you want to do the project, you can contact us here at the museum, and we can get those supplies to you to make sure you have everything you need to complete the activity. Now let's get started, and we're gonna to go to the galleries. This is a painting called View of Montgomery, and we're gonna look at it and see if we can tell what time period this artist was working in or trying to de depict in the scene. So we have, it's a landscape, and we can tell that it's a landscape because it has land, and it has a horizon line, which is the line that delineates land from sky. So we can clearly see the difference between land and sky above. And often landscapes have a lot of natural things like trees, water, um, sky, clouds, but they also can have people and they can also have buildings. And this piece has all of those things. And so first we're gonna look a little bit at some of the buildings. And that's one of the indicators how we know that this is actually supposed to be Montgomery. And the biggest one is this object right here. It's very large, it's in the background, but it's, it's very big. And so we know that it's a very big building, even though it's kind of supposed to be far away. And we can tell by looking at it that it's a Capitol building. And if we look close, we can see the very distinctive black clock that is on our Capitol building downtown. And we can see two flags on either side of the dome that are flying. Now, what we can tell is that the flags are actually American flags. And what that tells us is that this painting was done after the Civil War, because prior to the Civil War, those were not the flags that were flown. And so that tells us a little bit about the time that we know that it's after the Civil War. So we have two predominant church steeples, and historians have been able to identify which churches those are, and they think even though it's not really accurate placed next to where it's in position next to the Capitol building, that they do believe that those are the churches um, that still exist today. Um, and then we have other smaller homes that are all kind of identified with the, their certain look. And again, that was a look that type of architecture that came along after the Civil War. And so we're looking after 1865. Another indicator is over here and here we see horse-drawn carriages and wagons. And so there's no vehicles on the road, there's no interstate, the roads are dirt. So this is another way we can tell that this is a fairly old painting. Um, one thing that the artist chose to uh, include were things like this hidden figure right here. This is a gentleman that's picking fruit. We have a uh, woman and her child. She's carrying a basket on her head. Uh, we can maybe guess, maybe she's going to market, maybe she's coming from the market, maybe she is working in the field. Most likely that she is a sharecropper um, a, or a formerly enslaved person that would have been enslaved before the Civil War. Uh, we have goats and cows and horses. And so that's not really what you think of as Montgomery. You know, we're, we're kind of a bustling city, we have interstates, we have traffic, and lots of industry and buildings. But in this time period, after the Civil War, about 1875 is what our guess is for this painting. This is more what Montgomery was like. It was a small, kind of still frontier type city, um, and then, as Montgomery grew, it became the epicenter for politics for the state and also became the center of the cotton industry. And um, the state of Alabama 
is really known for its agriculture, especially early on in its state's history. The state became um, official in 1819. We just start, celebrated our bicentennial, so our 200th birthday of being a state. And um, we talk a lot about this painting in Montgomery and Montgomery's role in our state's history. So I hope when you get to come back to the museum, you'll spend a little bit of time looking closely. There's a lot of little hidden treasures here. I've pointed out the, the uh, gentleman picking fruit, but there's actually a really great one and I'm gonna end with a teaser. This thing right here, I'm really curious to know if you can figure out what it is. All right, thank you. So now we're gonna be talking about this painting here. We've moved forward in our state's history about 55 years. So we're now, we've just passed the Great Depression of uh, the 1930s. We're in mid 1930s right now. And this is by an artist named John Kelly Fitzpatrick. And he is a Alabama artist. He is actually was born in Wetumpka and he grew up in here in Montgomery. And he actually founded this museum and the Dixie Art Colony. So he's a really prolific artist that we have in our collection and we're really excited to be able to show his work. But the one thing that's really special about him is that he is a WPA artist. And what that is, is after the Great Depression, President Roosevelt knew he needed to kickstart the economy because people were losing their jobs and we needed to get back uh, making money and making the country work again. And so he came up with this idea called the New Deal. And the way that the New Deal worked was a bunch of programs that would give jobs to people. And some of those jobs included doing road construction or building parks, um, making paths through wildlife um, refuge, interstate construction, that kind of thing. And so it gave people jobs so that they could uh, feed their families um, but it also helped get the uh, country back looking great. Um, and one thing that he included in that was the public works um, project. And so it's better known as PWAP. And those were artists and writers that were hired to do work for the government. Uh, writers would go and write stories that would build morale and make people feel good again. Um, photographers were sent across the country to photo photograph what was happening around the country. And then painters like Fitzpatrick was hired to paint images that would then be hung in public spaces like post office or um, city hall or a courthouse. And so this is an example of one of his pieces that he traveled around Alabama and he was hired specifically to paint images of Alabama industry. And so this is a cotton gin. So this is an area where cotton would be processed after it had been picked. And, you know, it's not really very telling, but what we know about this piece is that he probably saw it in real life, that he was traveling around Alabama and he would pick out uh, different buildings and things that, ta that showed industry in our state, but that what he did was he made certain choices to make the painting look happy. And in art, we do that with color and we do that with tone. And so if you look at this piece, the blues in the sky are really bright and the white of the clouds are really vivid and they pop. And that's a lot because he has this kind of coppery brown on the building and they contrast and complement each other and uh, make the colors pop brighter. And the little lighter smudges, just a simple brush stroke on that tree makes that just vibrant and pop out. And so he made these choices, color choices, that made it more inviting and feel happy. I would guess that not many people that would just pass a cotton gin on the road would think that's a really pretty picture but somehow Fitzpatrick made it pretty because he knew that it was going to hang in a post office or somewhere where people are gonna see it and it was meant to make them happy and make them proud about being an Alabama citizen again. And so uh, Fitzpatrick did this throughout 
beginning of about 1934 all the way until the beginning of World War II. Um, and the New Deal, it didn't get the country out of the Depression. What actually brought the country out of the Depression was the start of World War II because a lot of industries kick-started and um, had to make, make materials for the war effort. But the New Deal certainly helped uh, kind of propel the beginning of the country getting out of the recession or the depression. Um, and Fitzpatrick is one of those. He continued to paint um, throughout his life and is considered one of the most significant artists of Alabama. So he was very proud of his state and we are very proud to have him in our collection. All right, so the last piece that we're gonna talk about in our gallery tour is this piece called Homesick Proof Space Station. And it's by an artist named Roger Brown, who is also from Alabama. He's actually was born and raised in Opelika and then moved to Chicago uh, where he lived out the rest of his life. Um, he is really known for these kind of very simple images of things that are very familiar. And so he, this is his idea of what a space station looks like. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the artwork itself and then how we relate it back to our state's history. So first, when we're looking at this artwork, we can see that in the foreground, which is the very bottom of the painting, we have what looks like to be the Earth, and we can actually see the United States, most of the southeast of the United States. And that's kind of a nod to his um, growing up in Alabama. And then we have this little tiny thing right here, and it actually looks like an airplane or a rocket that has fire shooting out of it, and it's leaving Earth and heading towards the space station. Now our space station resembles a city block. So we have streets that intersect each other. We have buildings with windows that look very familiar to things that we might see in our own neighborhoods. There's even one that is very familiar to us that looks like a church. And within all of the buildings, you can see silhouettes of, of people that are inside the buildings. And then we have people that are actually walking along the streets. Now, if you didn't know any better, just looking at this, this would be your neighborhood. But if you look closely, the figures that are on the streets actually have a helmet on. And that's his way of letting you know that these people are actually living in space and that there's the rocket up here that looks like it's waiting to take off. Um, and so then we're th we look at the title. He chose the title Homesick Proof Space Station. So if we break down that title, what does homesick mean? If you've ever, the first time that you ever maybe slept over at a friend's house or went to grandma's house and spent the night and you might have woken up in the middle of the night and really missed your bed or your home or your mom, um, that's called homesick. A lot of times if we travel for a long period of time, we might enjoy the traveling, but we really want to be home. And so that's called homesick. But this is homesick proof. So if we look at it that way, if we look at other words that have proof in them, waterproof. If you have a waterproof jacket, what does that mean? That means that the water cannot get through. So it's, it resists that. Um, fireproof it resi resists fire. So if we're looking at that with this painting, homesick proof, so that means it, res it resists being homesick. So the artist is trying to say that this space station, if you're visiting this space station, it's going to be so much like home that you won't get homesick because you're gonna feel like you're right at home. Now, when we're talking about how this is relevant to Alabama's history, we have to kind of go back in time a little bit. It all started back in 1910 when the Wright brothers, who most people know or have heard of, uh, did the first flight uh, airplane. They actually, 10 years after they did their first flight, they were in Montgomery and they started an aviation school right here in Montgomery in 1910. And it really became a vital link in mail service. And so Montgomery play already had a very early history with air flight. And then in 1960, 
up in Huntsville, near Huntsville, um, the Marshall Space uh, Field Center began and they became very important and significant to NASA and getting rockets to travel to space. So they um, actually, they developed the transportation, the rockets that got astronauts to space and as well as uh, the first satellite. And even today, Huntsville is one of the largest uh, space transportation centers in the country. Um, they are still very hard at work uh, continuing to t uh, develop things that go with space travel and transportation and have a lot of significant um, contributions to the field. And closer to home, we have a see an increase in aircraft industry. I think just recently within the past year, we've gotten um, an industry in Alabama that wants to create the next fighter jets for the Air Force. And so Alabama has actually had a really strong uh, part in air flight as well as space travel. So that's why we talk about Roger Brown. He was very interested in space travel and knew of Huntsville and their importance. And so we think that might have been one of the reasons that he wanted to paint this. So before we go into the studio, I wanna show you the piece that inspired our studio project. So this piece over here is by artist Cappy Thompson. It is an enameled window. It looks a lot like stained glass, but the um, process is a little bit different. But it actually is telling the story of the night the stars fell on Alabama. And this was from a historic scientific um, retelling of a meteor shower that happened in 1833. It also became the state song for the state of Alabama. And the figures on the right are actually covering themselves up with a quilt that have images that are found in the museum. So that's pretty neat to be able to look at those and then you can go and try to find uh, those things in the museum. It's a little bit like a scavenger hunt. And then the figure on the left underneath the magnolia tree is actually the artist. So this is also a self-portrait and she's included herself actually painting what she's seen. And above her in the sky are muses. Some people call these angels, but she refers to them as muses. And so she includes three muses. They are kind of sweeping through the sky around the stars that are falling, the meteors. Uh, they look a little bit like flowers, but they have these great tails and kind of vibrant look like fireworks almost all throughout the sky. And then way up at the top, we have the sun that has a face on it. And then we have a moon that all, almost looks like it has a crescent moon and then a face. And so this is the artist's interpretation of this, um, the night the stars fell on Alabama. And now we're gonna go into the studio and we're gonna create our own. And we're calling it Stars Over Montgomery. All right, so the studio project that we do with this Becoming Alabama tour is called Stars Over Montgomery, and it's inspired by the Cappy window that we just saw. And for this project, you're gonna need construction paper, uh, scratch paper, and a couple of uh, pieces that have pre-drawn images on them. And one thing, teachers, if you're really interested in your students doing these uh, lessons, you can contact us here at the museum and we will provide all the materials for your class for free. So um, we're gonna begin. This is gonna be our final project. Um, and you can see that it's the Montgomery skyline. So in the foreground, which is the bottom of the picture, we have the Dexter Avenue Church and we have the Capitol building. And we have examples of those over here. And then behind them in the middle ground, we have some other buildings that are pretty prominent in, our, in Montgomery's skyline. We have the RSA building, um, Regions Bank, and actually the next, this last tallest building is actually a parking garage, but it's pretty predominant in our skyline 
which is kind of interesting. But we're gonna create those, and then with the scratch paper, we're actually gonna create our um, stars falling, so our fireworks. So you're gonna begin with your construction paper and your scratch paper. Now the scratch paper has two sides. One is kind of slick and shiny, and then one is very dull and kind of has a texture to it. You want to glue down the shiny side. If you're not sure, you're just gonna take your thumbnail in one corner and see if the white comes away. If it does, that's the side that you want facing up. So you're gonna take your glue stick and again, you just want to double check that you're doing the shiny smooth side and you want to glue it down. You don't need to use a ton of glue. Glue sticks work pretty well. You want to make sure that you always return the lid. And you want to center. I'm going to try to get it as centered as possible, but honestly with art you can put it anywhere you want. All right. So that's going to serve as our background, and the color is kind of going to be our frame. So now we have our background done. We're going to set that aside for just a second. So the next piece we're going to do is this pre-drawn piece that's our middle ground, so the gray. And you're just going to take your scissors, and you're going to try to cut as close to the line as you can. But again, with art, you can kind of do it the way you want. I'm kind of a pre precise cutter, but I also want to try to be fast. So I'm just going to try to do it as quickly as I can. Making sure sometimes it's kind of hard to cut through curves or corners, and there's a lot of corners in this. So you want to slow down and try to navigate that corner as best you can. Almost done. All right, so we have finished. With our middle ground, I'm going to take my scraps and just move them to the side. All right, so now we're bringing our background back and we're going to line up our cut out middle ground right with the bottom of your white scratch paper. Okay, you're going to glue it down. It doesn't matter which direction if you want it to go this way or this way that is up to you this is your artwork again you don't have to use a lot of glue a little goes a long way you're going to place that at the bottom of the white scratch paper just like that okay now again we're going to move that to the side now we have just a blank piece of black construction paper and you have this stencil. Stencils are kind of plastic, they're thick and they allow you to trace. So you're going to put the stencil at the bottom of the black piece of paper right along the bottom edge just like that. And you're going to use a white colored pencil so that we can see our lines when we draw them. And you're just going to quickly outline or trace the stencil onto the black piece of paper. Again, this has a lot of corners and curves, so you're just going to do the best that you can. Don't get caught up if you mess up or your line doesn't look right or you make a mistake. That's the best thing about art is art is always right. However it turns out is the way it's supposed to be. So we have our traced um, foreground. So now we're gonna, again, quickly cut it out. There might be other buildings that you know of 
Maybe it's your church that you go to or a favorite restaurant or a favorite store or something like that. And you can always look that up and see what building shape it has. And you can include that in your skyline if you'd like. This little part right here is kind of tight, so I'm trying to take my time. And then the Capitol building has these angles on it that are kind of like stair steps. And they're a little difficult to. And it's got some curves and the dome. To navigate these angles even for somebody that cuts a lot it's still difficult so do not get stressed out or give up so we've cut that out we're gonna set our scraps to the side we're gonna bring back our other piece and again just like before you're gonna glue down on top of the gray at the bottom so just like that Okay, so we're going to take our glue stick. Again, it doesn't matter which side you glued down. And you're going to glue that right down along the bottom. All right. So now we have our foreground which is the closest to us and the bottom of the picture. Our middle ground, which is in the middle of the picture and a little bit further away. And then the white serves as our background. And that's the thing that's the furthest away from us. So now we're gonna do the really fun part. You're gonna take this wooden stylus. It's basically like a giant toothpick that has a little bit of a sharp end on it. And you're gonna go on the scratch, <coughs> excuse me, the scratch art and you're going to, just like you would with a pencil, you're gonna use it just like a pencil and you can see it's gonna make some little shed, shedding, shavings off. You can make lines and color will appear, okay? So you can do anything you want. If you want to do stars with starbursts coming out of them, if you want, like Cappy did, if you want to make them more look like a flower with things coming out of them, just going to kind of shake and get some of those shavings off. That's just the white layer that you're scraping away. So you're going to use your stylus and you're just going to decorate the background. You can do anything you want. You can put words into it if you'd like. Um, you can put other designs or you can just be very abstract and do patterns. All right, so we call this Stars Over Montgomery. And again, if you would like for your class to do this project, please let us know and we will get the supplies to you. Thank you.